Ugh, you guys, it's exhausting. Aren't you exhausted? Truly, truly, aren't you exhausted by it? Like, truly, is it? All right, hello, and welcome to another episode of Aren't You Exhausted? I am your host, Ashley, and this is your Saturday episode. I am being joined again by my lovely husband. Hello, I am here, I am back, and still lovely. <laughs> um, tonight, since Goral World is a little lackluster in terms of content as of late, we're just going to briefly uh, go into discussing Chantal, and then we're going to move on ahead to Am I the Asshole subreddit content. So if you're not interested in that, this isn't going to be your episode tonight. Um, but if you are interested in what Chantal has kind of been up to the past week, uh, you can give that a listen and skip over the Am I the Asshole, or if you want the Am I the Asshole, you can skip ahead to that. It shouldn't be that long, <laughs> but it still may be on the long side for those that like to put something on to listen to in the background. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start with Chantal's latest live streams. They've kind of been a mix of like high giddiness, some low and depressing attention seeking, and then just straight up raging like we we know and love her for. And it's mostly encompassing her top three enemies, her ex obsession, Nodder, his live in lover, Dee Dee, and her arch nemesis, FFG. <laughs> um her chat has been giving her a little bit of shit about the fact that she's so willing to give up her elderly cats and all of her possessions for some D. Uh, she claims it's not for the D. He's her husband. So, of course, she would give up everything to be with him. You want to come on that, comment on that, Lee? Wanna on that? You want to uh, comment on that? <laughs> I mean, what is the reason why she has to get rid of the cat? What is the reasoning that she's given? Well, she has two cats. She has an elderly, like, 19-year-old cat, and then she has one that's, I think it's, like, five or six years old. I'm not quite 100% sure on how old it is. Right. Um, She's giving them up because she doesn't want to travel with them. The co She's going to be constantly traveling back and forth from Canada to Kuwait, uh, staying three months in Kuwait, and then returning home for only a month to go straight back to Canada. And also... I believe their religion doesn't allow pets in the home, um, at least not cats and dogs. They feel it's dirty. And so this is why she wants to give them up, because she got into a relationship with a man after a few months, went and visited him in Kuwait, got married within her first visiting of him and seeing him in person, and now is willing to topsy-turvy her whole life and give everything away for three months at a time staying with him until her bankruptcies clear up. So this is what I'm saying. This is probably going to upset a lot of people who love the shit on her. I'm, glad, I'm not totally mad at it. And look, I like to be devil's advocate. I like to give everybody a chance. And I have, I trust me, I have no love for Chantal. But to be fair, if she's not going to be there to take care of the cats, at least she's doing the right thing by putting them somewhere that they can be cared for because some people would just not even think about this and just leave the cats and say they're cats they can take care of themselves look her life is her life what she wants to do with her life is fine you know yeah it sucks that she's not caring for the cat but to be fair life happens and like sometimes you have to give our pet if shit happens that's just that's just the way of life and sadly pets pets tend to fall into the ex expendable part of a family yeah. where well i first I think, to go like if you if you got a job and you had to move across country and for some reason you couldn't take the dog with you it's not the same as you got a job and you can't take your wife and, and kid with you it's yeah. just it's just how it is and some people treat dogs like they're and pets like they're part of the family and some people treat pets like you know like they're lesser and it, you know i don't see really anything wrong with it it sucks and it's foolish but at the end of the day if she ends up with this guy and he's and it all works out then yeah it makes sense that she's gonna want to spend time with her husband how she got there you know all that can be argued i think and uh, is it stupid? Is it whatever? But here's the at the end of the day, the only person who's who's going to suffer is her. She's the one 
who's flying out three months. She's the one who's giving up all her shit. So at the end of the day, let her make her mistakes and let it all blow up on her face. She's the only one who's going to suffer from all this shit. She's a grown-ass woman. If it works out, then good for her. If it doesn't, then she's an idiot. And yeah, she's I think the at all. I think the only like real issue people had with it is the elderly cat. Obviously, if she were to give it to the pound or a rescue, they're not going to possibly be able to adopt that cat out. It may sit in foster care forever, and it's going to be totally fucking stressed out because Chantal is all it's known for a vast majority of its life. Something tells me that another owner will be a grand upgrade. I, know. <laughs> I think Chantal has a responsibility to that pet to make sure that it gets a home in which it, you know, it's loved. But other than that, I think that she is well in within her right to move on with her life. And if the the life doesn't involve can't involve the pet, then that's to that. I mean, she could just not give a shit, leave the pet for three months, and whatever. No, she's doing. She knows. She knows what her life is going to look like in the future, and it's not going to be a life in which pets are a priority. And so she's doing what she needs to do now. Hopefully. She maybe has a friend or somebody that she knows will take care of the cat. Yeah, she said that, like, a friend of the family is going to be taking the cats in. Look, I'm all for shit. So that's better than nothing. I'm for shitting on Chantal and Amberlynn. But at the end of the day, these people are looking for something to shit on. And sometimes there's just, they're grasping at straws. And this is one of those scenarios where I think they're grasping at straws. And I think that that's... A- I, no, I don't necessarily think it's grasping at straws because... Chantal's known for doing things impulsively. Right. And this was a very impulsive thing, traveling to Kuwait. But after not knowing this man for very long but and being in similar situations with a Muslim-esque man, Nader. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that. Uh, to me, she's the only one who's going to suffer from this. The audience is not going to suffer from this. It's no, not- but there's a lot of animal advocates that do rummage through YouTube and see but how she... Have you seen the way she treats her cat? It would probably be a better home. It probably would be a better so, home, honestly. You know what I mean? There is no... But, any, there's, these are just people who want to... They want something to uh, criticize her about. And look, I'm all for that shit, but I think that the problem is sometimes you get lost in wanting to criticize somebody so much that you end up just criticizing every little thing about them and it doesn't really it doesn't really get you anywhere because then when they make a big fuck up or something it's like you guys always criticize me it's like yeah i think you should pick and choose i think wait and see until this blows up in her face and then people can be like yep we told you so but yeah she, like she knows she's the one who's spending all this money she's the one who's going to end up screwed i'm kind of waiting on the burnout because traveling that often cuz you don't think like oh She's going to be staying in Kuwait three months and then spending a month back in Canada. That's going to get fucking tiring really fast Absolutely. doing that traveling I barely want to so often. Once a week. <laughs> I can't get on a fucking plane for 28 <laughs> hours. And, right. For every three months. And on top of that, you know she's not going there and just going to sit around. She's going to go there and spend time with them and it's going to be a whole new environment. She's going to be completely shell- like uh, shell-shocked and it's going to be her, her sleep schedule is going to be off. It's going to be awful. But at the end of the day, it's her life. Yeah. Um, I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around the logistics of her giving everything away, but claiming she won't be staying with her family the majority of the time back in Canada and hopes to spend the majority of her time with her husband. But I'm not really sure what the laws are for the visitor visa she has. Will she be changing it to another form of visa that will allow her to stay longer uh, than the 90 days as uh, she said she wanted to return earlier and wanted to stay longer this trip does she have the finances to afford this trip multiple times a year back and forth these trips are pricey and arduous and i know sala may help with the bill but can he foot the whole bill the man is a co-owner of a boutique perfume shop and i highly doubt the business is booming especially with the state of his living situation and the economy right now more than likely, Chantal is still mainlining him money to show he's a provider for her. She did this with Nader as well. Uh, claimed that he was the one providing all of these things for her when in fact she was the one providing the money. 
So my question is, is there a plan in motion for him slash her to move to where the significant other is? She doesn't want to live in Kuwait. She has said that she doesn't want to. She wants to just travel. Um, I don't see how that's going to be plausible for the long term, um, constantly traveling and not really calling any place home. And as far as her bankruptcy is concerned, I don't think it went how she was hoping. So I think that's also a reason why this may take longer and why they're doing the whole three months, one month back and forth because she can't sponsor um, Sala right now, her husband, right. to come to Canada. So it may be a one to two year wait. It may be longer <laughs> with Chantal with how she spends money. So, I mean, look, you and I were long distance for yes. this. Three years? Yeah, it was three. Well, three years combined because we had lived together for like five months and then I went back to Ohio and... The majority of our relationship, yeah, we were, we were long distance. Getting at least yeah. now, I think we finally have laughed ourselves. But, <laughs> you know, and my thought process is this, you know, people say long distance doesn't work. And at the end of the day, really, it's about the relationship. The relationship... If it's if it's meant to work out, it'll work out. It's hard as shit though. Like it, it, I I sympathize with Chantal like this depressive ep episode and kind of self sabotaging, um, at, from the depression. But at the same instance, she hasn't known him for as long as I knew <laughs> my husband. Well, my now husband, but I had talked to my husband and video chatted with my husband every single day you like you get married right away and granted you know we both live in the united states it is yeah scenario i get that but at the end of the day you could have been a million miles away you still it still would have had to be we still had to work it out somehow yeah and i think that i think if she if she didn't go to visit him every three months she probably would be able to figure out a way to get get them together sooner like as i said you and i we only saw each other minus the, like, I don't even think it was five months that we lived together. Yeah, it was five months because I was five months pregnant. Five, yeah. five <laughs> months. But, like, you visited for a weekend and then a week. Then you're here for five months. Then you were here for a weekend and a week. Yeah. Like, that was all in, in the span of three years, we maybe spent seven months with each other in person yeah and you know so it's possible it's doable and if it's really meant to work out i think that it will and don't get me wrong we had issues uh not me you but <laughs> thankfully i was there to save the relationship yeah but granted i'm under the impression that you know if this is truly the person you want to be with then you just you make it work somehow and you have faith in each other and she i think know him enough yeah to have that faith in him but then on the other hand if she didn't know enough that that faith in him or the relationship then this is not what she she should be doing but it's her life it's her money do whatever the hell you want just be aware that when it blows up your face people are going to fucking say something yeah so don't get all pissy when people tell you they told you so um that's another thing like if she would just not travel uh back and forth like that she could probably take care of her uh financial situation like relatively quickly probably within the year and be able to stay out there <laughs> longer or have him come to canada like be able to sponsor him so i i i, I guess i just don't grasp um how she feels i mean i guess i do grasp how she feels because she needs that um gratification from being in his presence she needs to be in his presence or she thinks that he's cheating on her um which is oh, really? very frown yeah it's already started she was already like that's why she's depressed <laughs> and she thinks that he's gonna cheat on her she thinks he's gonna cheat on her or she thinks he is cheating on her I, I guess either or. Because, like, does she have any... Like, There's no proof of anything. I mean, people in 
uh, the reaction community have commented um, in her comment section that he's active on uh, Tinder again. But, you know, those people <laughs> yeah, are just trying to rile her up. It, I'm not, like, saying that it's not possible, but the likelihood that it's somebody just trying to rile her up is pretty high up there. I mean, if they're easily finding him on, him on Tinder, she should be able to do it, too. Yeah. Um, also, another um, good debate on this is, is she going to be healthy enough to constantly make this trip back and forth with the possibility of her health insurance no longer being affordable or accessible because she'll need to supplement it with private insurance due to Canadian health care not covering people who vacation or snowbird, snowbird, as they call it, for up to seven months of the year. So if she does... <laughs> nine months over the course of her going back and forth she's already put herself out of the free canadian health care and will have to pay for private insurance so if <laughs> if chantal is successful with her loophole with extending her visitor visa and tourist visa by traveling to a nearby place and returning back to kuwait relatively quickly to give her a new visa for another 90 days this could possibly negate her health care in Canada that she desperately needs at her current health situation. And what would she do if an emergency arose in Kuwait and she needed to be seen by a doctor there? Can you imagine the amount of debt she would rack up to be treated? Because Kuwaiti currency is much more uh, expensive than Canadian currency. Like, their dollar is worth more. Um, she's getting older and has returned back to sitting while cooking and live streaming for hours on end on top of the constant traveling. So, I mean, this isn't out of the realm of possibilities that she could need medical care in Kuwait and not be able to afford it. How old is she? She's 38. Okay. But she's not like that old. I know, but she's older. She's 5'2 and 351. She has a CPAP machine because she has sleep apnea. She has high blood pressure. She has, she's been a diabetic in the past. I don't think she's been tested for it again or taking anything for it medically. She seems to think that she's cured it. <laughs> well, she should tell the medical. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. Like you can tell when she's not feeling well. And I mean, the fact that she can't even stand to cook is very telling. Like... Come on. She went right back to her old ways of sitting in that damn fucking office chair in her kitchen and not moving from it. Like, she she claimed she was so active in Kuwait, uh, standing to cook and cleaning everything. We're not seeing that <laughs> as she's returned back to Canada. We've seen lazy Chantal again, <laughs> which could be a result of the depression and coming down from having been high for the first three days of her return back home. So we'll give her that pass, I guess, for right now. But in the coming weeks, if we don't see progression on her actually achieving any of the goals that she's put forth out there on her live streams that she needs to accomplish before returning back to Kuwait, I mean, that'll be a telltale sign that she's not taking this seriously. Huh. And now we're done with we're done with Chantal shit. She's boring. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go on to Am I the asshole? We have sto I have picked out four stories that we're gonna read through and give our opinion on. So the first one is Am I the asshole for telling my son that he is obviously gay? <laughs> my son 17 has apparently been in the closet for the past seven months so my son is fairly masculine straight acting if that makes sense however he's very obviously had a boyfriend 18 for the past seven months he sometimes baby talks to this boy hugs him all the time has called him handsome shared clothes sits way too close to him to the point where they're basically cuddling. He closes his bedroom door when with him, but not any other friends. 
sees him like every day, buys him gifts, and for the past seven months he is now always smelling great and has his hair fixed really nice, dresses nicer, among other things. Today I asked my son if he was going to invite his boyfriend for our trip, and he got awkward and said, that's not funny. I asked what he meant, and he said, I'm straight, that's not funny. I laughed, and then I realized he was serious, and I started laughing even harder. I told him he was very obviously in a relationship with a guy and did a terrible job hiding it. He got emotional and started asking me not to tell his dad. My husband already knows. Like I said, it was obvious. He then got upset saying out it saying I outed him when he wasn't ready. He hasn't said a word to me in a couple of days. Am I the asshole? What do you think, Lee? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and controversially say no. Because I think the, I, I think to be an asshole, you have to have intent. I think this was more of a, they were trying to you know, help him along to mm-hmm. be comfortable. And obviously, I, from what I gather, none of them care that he's gay. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like they are upset about it. They're just, you know, they're kind of like, you know, he's doing a really crappy job of pretending. And so he should be able to be open and be himself. Obviously, you know, you come out when you're ready. I think it's more the laughing at him part that was kind I, of, I think, I, you know, rough. Yeah, but I think that sometimes you laugh in awkward situations. Like, as I said, I don't think the parents are being an asshole. I think that they were trying to, you know, show that it was okay and he didn't have to hide who he was. And I think that, you know, kids are, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to go through. And he may have been like, you know, so taken aback. It was a weird way of of doing it. I would have sat down and maybe been like, hey, you know, I've noticed some things. And I just want to say, like, if you are, it's okay. Not you're bringing a boyfriend with you. You know what I mean? Like, that's like a weird way of. I wouldn't have even did the whole bringing the boyfriend with you. Why couldn't I? Why couldn't she have just said, do you want to bring your friend with you? No, I mean, I why make it a big deal? That's the my whole thing. Like, it's not being a big deal. I mean, if I saw our child doing this and obviously trying to hide it, I would want them to know that they well, obviously, that. they're not trying to hide it if they're he having... is if he's upset that they outed him. He's just doing a crappy job of hiding it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't... I think, the, I think the idea is you want your kid to be able to be who they are around you, and if you truly accept them for who they are, they should be able to be feel comfortable about saying, this is my boyfriend, or kissing their boyfriend, or whatever they want to do around yeah. their parents. And I think that it's a tough job for a parent... Especially in this kind of scenario, because even as a straight kid, it's awkward to talk about your relationships with your parents. It's awkward at that age. And add on the, you know, the uh, stigma of of, of a non-traditional relationship, whether it be homosexual or whatever, it can make it even more kind of awkward. And it's just a very awkward age. And I think that the kid had an overreaction, maybe that maybe it was just more shock. And the parent did a kind of a weird job of saying, we know you're gay, instead of sitting down and maybe having a conversation and letting them know that everything was okay. They said, are you bringing your boyfriend with you? Not really letting the kid know that they were accepting of it, just kind of making a weird, like... Also, they were kind of... Skip the conversation that obviously this family needs to have so this child can feel comfortable in their own skin. I think, I think everybody kind of sucks here and nobody kind of sucks. I just think it's kind of a weird thing. As long as the parents accept him and... Let him live his life. I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think the kid will, you know, it's just going through a lot and, you know. And maybe he just wasn't ready to be outed like that. Like, maybe he was still questioning his sexuality and for them to be like. Or maybe the boyfriend, you know, is the one who does. And maybe the boyfriend doesn't yeah. feel comfortable. You know, it's, there's a lot to, to go on. But as a parent, sometimes your job is to try and make, try and help your kid get to a point in which they could be happy and sometimes you know you have to help them along and it's not always pleasant like but you're doing it so that they could be happy because you know they, sh- they deserve to be happy and be themselves and not let anybody bring them down because a lot of people can live in the closet for a long period of time and hiding who you are could be just as bad as yeah you know as being told you know oh made fun of and stuff so, like sometimes just being who you are allows you to 
deal with the shit that you're going to get. But that's my point of view. I don't think anybody's an asshole here. I think it just, I think this is a weird. I think, yeah, it was just a weird situation. Miscommunication and a weird way of going about showing. Parents can be awkward sometimes. Yeah, parents, just remember, <laughs> like, just because you're a parent does not mean you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah trust We're me. all learning as we go. <laughs> Next one is, uh, you're going to love this one. So it's, am I the asshole for telling my husband to stop staring at me? I'm pregnant and it makes me uncomfortable. It's like he's undressing me with his eyes by the way he stares at me. Not looks, stares. He says I'm just too sexy when I told him I don't like it. I'm honestly considering withholding sex which I don't particularly want right now. So can he get a clue? Am I the asshole? Um, <laughs> I mean, here, here, here's the thing. First of all, no, you're pregnant. Who knows what the hell's going on with your, you know, emotions. So yeah, I think that this one's an easy, just most likely there's just a lot going on. That being said, the weaponizing sex is, is, the, is the part that got me. There is a small like part of me that is like is this guy into like pregnant women as a fetish? oh that's the part that like does kind of irk me yeah that is a fetish i didn't even think about that and, like that's the part that's kind of like you know it's cool like you know to find your wife still sexy when she's pregnant and that's that's totally yeah cool. it's another thing to be like i'm into pregnant women and like if that unleashes something in them yeah, it may cause issues down the line. And look, obviously, sometimes you know you can't, you don't choose your fetishes. So like, I just hope that it's more of like, honestly, I hope he gets more of like her. Maybe her boobs get really big or something, and like <laughs> he's just like look at her, not like she's pregnant, and I like that. Yeah, but you know, I think, I think, I also think that when you're pregnant, you, you, everything is cranked up to eleven. So it may just be him trying to be him knowing that she is. Uncomfortable. Hormonal and uncomfortable, yeah. yeah. His way. Because trust me, this is the same thing I would do. I yeah. and like My thing would be like, she doesn't feel sexy. I'm going to tell her she's sexy. You're sexy. And then you get pissed off. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> well, fuck me that. So, I don't know. It just, it just seems like. I am definitely one of those people I do not like being stared at. I don't care if it's lovingly or if you're staring at me grotesquely. I hate being stared at. And I <laughs> am very vocal about not staring at me. <laughs> so... I don't feel like she's the asshole for venting that she's uncomfortable with him staring at her. I do find it assholey that she's weaponizing sex or considering we weaponizing sex and holding out um, to kind of make him get a clue on the fact that she doesn't like being stared at. That was my only thing. So, yes and no. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go ahead. I thought you would like that one. <laughs> um, the next one is, am I the asshole for telling my mother-in-law to stop spoiling my daughter? My husband and I have four kids, 18, 15, 11, and 9. But this post is about my oldest, 18. A little backstory, my husband has always been spoiled and enabled by his mom. Hmm. He won't eat my cooking if I don't use her recipes. And if I'm out of town, he'll have his mom do his laundry. His mom still packs his lunches. Damn. My daughter's favorite ice cream is always sold out at the local grocery store. And sometimes she could find it at the one a few miles away, but it's a 50-50 at best. It's also stupidly expensive, like $10 for a pint of ice cream. She found a pint on Wednesday and told everyone not to touch it and that she's saving it for when she has lunch with my mother-in-law on Thursday. We had my mom over for dinner that day when she was saying nobody was allowed to touch her ice cream. And then after dinner, she reached into the freezer and started eating her ice cream in front of everybody without offering it to anybody. We got into an argument over how rude she was and I ended up splitting the ice cream between everybody. I heard her tell my mother-in-law that they couldn't have ice cream with lunch and I blamed and had blamed it on me. My mother-in-law asked for the name of the ice cream and sent my father-in-law to four different grocery stores to buy some. And then to make it worse, she tried to send a pint home with my husband. He forgot it by the front door and nobody noticed until the next morning, so she sent my father-in-law out to buy some again. 
When I heard about this, I called my mother-in-law and told her not to spoil my daughter like that. She had to share the ice cream because she decided to start eating it in front of everybody, and she should not be rewarded for her temper tantrum by giving two pints to not share. She thinks I'm being mean to my daughter and that I should just let her have the ice cream, but I don't want my daughter to think it's okay to be selfish and rude. Am I the asshole? I'm going to comment on this first, and I think the mom is an asshole. And it's because the daughter is 18. The daughter bought the ice cream. So how she wants to dispense of that ice cream should be solely up to her. Not just because she brings it home to her family where she lives does she have to share that. She bought it with her own money. So the fact that the mother-in-law bought her ice cream because everybody shared her ice cream that she wanted to have just for herself. I don't see that as spoiling. I see that as the grandmother trying to correct a fucking wrong that the mother did. Uh, I feel it's very rude of the mom to expect her daughter to share something that she wanted only to herself and paid for by herself. My only question is, is she like this only with this daughter or is she like this with all the kids? I don't if she's choosing favorites and I kind of get like hey you know it's the oldest so maybe she is choosing the younger children over I mean look at the end of the day it's not your response I don't know I just I mean the mom's obviously seem, seems kind of asshole-ish um but the grandma does I mean it's the grandma right as long as she's treating all the kids the same then I don't care it's really if she's treating like one this one kid you know treating her like treating her like this and then the other kids kind of get the short end of the stake that I'm I would be like hey you know if you're gonna treat her special I'd ask you not to because it makes the other kids feel bad but as long as the other kids get special special treatment then fuck it go for it right like I mean even then like it's one thing to be like to you know she gives her ice cream when she didn't eat her dinner and like you know, she's 18 I'm I know what I'm saying is is it'd be one thing to give her ice cream when the what the, you're trying to teach your kid a lesson it's another thing to be like you know, I don't know. And like, I get that the mom was mad that she took out the ice cream after dinner and started eating it in front of everybody and then not offering it to anybody, but she doesn't need to. Like, what the fuck? Just because you're eating something in front of somebody doesn't mean you need to offer it to them, especially if they just finished eating dinner. Yeah. Like, you're already fed. It's like, like, fuck like off. It's dessert. Like it. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely feel like the mom's the asshole in this situation and not the mother-in-law. So what do you think, Lee? Yeah, I, w- I would agree on that one. I think that, you know, I-, I would need more information about how the grandmother treats the other kids just because I'd be curious on if, like, maybe they're special under treatment and this is, like, the- there's not enough information. But something tells me that people who post on these things, they're excited to share all the dirty details of shit like this so i would imagine that like this is just a one-time scenario and the grandma likes to go get her ice cream i mean you know it could just be it's just a damn treat god damn it it's just ice cream (laughs) yeah it's just i well it is a hard to find ice cream and we know how fucking mental you've been over my uh raspberry magnum ice cream (laughs) trying to find it i have to find it for you but you have to eat but what if I were to, like, get that ice cream, pay for it with my own money, and decide to eat it, and then you got bitchy because I didn't want to share it with everybody? I guess that really is the, the answer to the question because my answer is you're a fucking adult. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's 18. She's an adult. She paid for it herself. No, you're right. <laughs> All right. The last story. Am I the asshole for not wanting to go to a mental health ward? Now, I feel like this is pretty important to... Uh, Chantal because on one of her recent live streams she said how she didn't like therapy because she felt like therapists judged her and (laughs) didn't really resolve anything and I think it's because Chantal just doesn't want to fix anything and feels she knows best but this is kind of in theme with that My son, 15, has a friend who is currently in an inpatient mental health treatment. 
Even though the patients are underage, visitors under 18 aren't allowed for whatever reason. My son asked me to go visit him and give his friend some comics, a letter, and a pizza. Apparently, the food there is bad, but you can bring outside food to visits and patients can eat it during the visit. The thing is, I don't want to go. His parents go and see him most days and I'm sure they bring him snacks. I told my son I could give them the comics and letter to give him, and he said no because he doesn't trust them to not read his letter. Well, I really don't want to go to the hospital. I just don't feel comfortable. My son said I'm being judge a judgmental asshole, but I'm not judging his friend. I just don't want to go. I don't even know what I would say to him. Would I just sit in silence and watch him eat pizza? I told him to ask his dad, but my husband w works weird hours and would only be able to go on weekends, and apparently the parents always go on weekends. My son is really disappointed in me and angry at me, but I don't have the right to have boundaries. He told me that I was lying when I said he can ask me for anything, which he can ask, but this is one request I don't think I can fulfill. Update. I read everyone's comments and a handful actually had productive feedback or information. Based on one person's idea, I will schedule a time to go when my son isn't busy and then FaceTime him in the visiting area. He and this friend will get to have a mostly private face-to-face -face chat. His friend will get to enjoy the pizza and he'll get his letter and comics. It'll be pretty much a visit between them and I'll just chauffeur basically. Thank you for the people who responded in good faith and actually read the post before commenting as a few <laughs> as a few as as few of you as there were. Sorry. So, okay, I just want to like so her son needed someone to take her to see his friend. He couldn't go he, because her son was only 15. Right. He's underage and can't visit because he's under the age of 18 and that's not allowed for the mental right. health. Right. Uh possible. All he needed was her to be there. Yeah. Yeah, she thought that she had to put on a fucking song and dance, apparently. Yeah. No, you're just supposed to be there. You don't need to fucking hang out with the friend. They're not, like, a mostly private visit. That's what they were going to have anyway. They didn't want you to fucking hang out and have pizza with them. All you have to do is be a chaperone. You can be on your phone. Like, you could... No, 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 no. The kid still couldn't go there. It could only be the mom going. Uh, uh well, the kid can't go inside. No, no. But... I guess some from the update, somebody in the comments had left feedback saying that she could have just FaceTimed her son in the visiting area so that the kid could see her son and they could have that conversation. And I'm still an asshole, by the way. Because, yeah. Like, here's your kid trying to be a good friend. You know, obviously, somebody raised your kid right. And how hard is it to strike up conversation with somebody? Talk about your kid that this kid is friends with. Or, you know... Think about the fact that this could be your kid and maybe, like, well, how would you feel if your son was in this situation and what would you want someone to I mean, you don't have to sit there and talk about the reason that he's in no, there. You, know, you can bring up the fact, like... You can treat him like a human being. Yeah. Look, I get it. If, you know, if, if our kid asks us, can you go hang out with my friends? Yeah, I would be like, damn, this is fucking awkward. Because I don't want to hang out with a kid. But at the end of the day, if it's really important and it's something that is good, like this, like helping somebody, and I see my, it's really important to my kid, you suck it up. A lot of shit you have to suck up when you're a parent, and I think that that's what really, like, that's what decides the good parents and the bad parents is when, when it's something you really don't want to do. And trust me, anybody out there who doesn't have parents, who doesn't have parents, who isn't a parent, there is shit that you do not want to do. I mean, even if you're not a parent, there's shit that you don't want to do, I'm but you saying, have to do it anyhow. I'm saying usually that kind of stuff benefits you. Yeah. That you have to do. Going to work benefits you. But, like, sometimes you have to do something for your kid. Like, it's part of being a parent is doing things that you may not want to do, but it makes them happy. That's yeah. why you had them. That's why you had kids, is, you know. Because you didn't have kids to make yourself happy. You had kids. Well, some people do. But that's still yeah. shitty. Yeah. It it should be a mutual beneficial scenario, but it isn't always. And you need to do what you can to make your kid happy. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, you don't let your kid get away with murder. But it, a simple request like this that to me seems like you raised a kid who is caring and, uh, you know, wants to 
help and has a healthy relationship with their friend like wanting to provide stuff to make their time better like the parent is against the kid yeah you know what i mean it's not like this kid you know murdered somebody and the mom it's it's, because she's like oh what about the dad it's like what about you (laughs) asshole yeah sent it 10 years of prison (laughs) that's gonna be all for us tonight um hopefully this isn't too long and hopefully it's enjoyable for you guys and you guys and if it is too long (laughs) suck it up (laughs) what what is that phrase that the uh uh trumpers like to say uh pull pull yourself up by your bootstraps (laughs) um (laughs) but that's gonna be all from us tonight i hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode and Thank you guys for listening. We will see you guys on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.